Just scratch work. All right, good morning, e-learners. <clears throat> Liam, what are you doing? You ain't a gangster. Sit. All right, uh, I will make a couple comments about the test, not specific questions on the test, but uh, so as a class, I, I, I pretty much got what I expected. Uh, maybe one or two A's, uh, good number, sizable number of B's, uh, an equally sizable number of C's, and a sprinkling of lower grades. Um, so as a class, I mean, I, I, this is what I kind of see every single year. So some of you are getting used to geometry still. Some of you are not understanding um, um, some basic concepts that I would have thought you would have by now, such as how do you name an angle? Tell me how you name an angle. You put a thingy. Okay, you put a thingy, right? You, you got to have an indicator that it's an angle, the symbol. If I say name the angle and you have not placed that symbol there, well, I mean, a, a mean math teacher would mark it wrong. Right. Some of you, when I said name the angle, you, you, you left that off. So it'll be on your, your test when you see it. For Chris and Paris, there's your, hey, uh, do it better than the rest of your classmates. Some of you, when I said name an angle, gave me two letters. Right? Do we, name, do we ever name an angle with two letters? <clears throat> there is no time that we ever name an angle. We can name an angle with one letter. Only if the angle is floating off by itself, you can name it by its vertex. If it's one of those more complicated things, you got X's and Y's and whatever other shape there, you have to name it with three letters, the middle letter being the vertex. So let's see, mistake number one on the test that, uh, that I'm concerned about is that some of you can't name angles. That's a chapter one thing, not a chapter two thing. We're gonna be naming angles the entire year. Uh, mistake number two, and I'm gonna go ahead, even though this is gonna give Chris and Karis a, a step up on the rest of you, is the vertical angles. As a class, and I see this every year, and I even warned you about it. As a class, being able to identify vertical angles is critical. I said we use vertical angles almost every single – well, I, there might not be a day that we don't use vertical angles. Um, but when we get into the next chapter, we're going to be using vertical angles all the time. You've got to be able to find a vertical angle. Vertical angles are formed by what shape? There's an X. An X forms vertical angles. Vertical angles are the ones that are opposite each other. Those two black ones, these two red ones are vertical angles. So when I ask you on the test to name the vertical angles, as a class, it was more than half could not name a vertical angle. And it's not vertical angle singular, it's vertical angles plural. Meaning that if you say one is a vertical, it's vertical to what? You give me this one and you don't give me the other one, those aren't vertical angles, that's an angle. So when I said name two vertical angles, it, it, it seemed to me like it was a fairly easy task. Now, did I give you a nice easy picture like this? No, mine was more complicated. So what I ask you guys to do on the more complicated ones, where when you, that was kind of basically the shape on the test, was to take your pen and outline the X that you're calling. As a class, maybe two people got the question right. Maybe two, it might've been three, but it certainly wasn't four. <clears throat> the entire class, the question that said, name a vertical angle, right? What you need to do is take your pencil and you need to make an X. You see this little piece right here? It doesn't form any vertical angles. It's just one ray off by its lonesome. Vertical angles are formed with an X. There has to be an X. And when you do that with a pencil, right, or a pen, you can see where the vertical angles are. You try to just use your eyeball, you're gonna make a mistake, okay? Uh, so that one is concerning to me that we can't uh, figure out vertical angles. We have to be able to figure out vertical, we're gonna be using them all the time. Um, so many theorems use vertical angles. What else? Uh, proof action was pretty darn good. Proof was actually pretty darn good. Most people here only had maybe one little problem, and I had a number of people get the whole darn thing right. 
Uh, not like 10 of you got it all right, but you know, two or three, you got the whole darn thing right, which was impressive. Most of you had one, if not two little tiny mistakes. I only had like maybe two kids that literally got everything wrong, except for the given, right? That happens as well too in, in, in a regular class. Um, starting in chapter three, there are no more fill in the blank proofs. They're all, you, I'm just gonna give you, just like I give the honors kids. Here's the statement, all right, here's the uh, given, here's the proof, you gotta do the whole darn thing. That's what we're working up to. All right, so I said this, I said that in this particular class, if you can do the skills, a skill is find a vertical angle. That's a skill. That's not a proof. That's just can you find it. Uh, if you can do the skills, you'll get a C in my class. So most of you, right, got C's or above. I said you get a B or A if you can do proofs. And for those of you that did the proof, you probably got an A on the test. Uh, for those of you that couldn't do the proofs, you couldn't name the statements, you couldn't do some of those other things that around proofs, then you probably got a C or a B. Right then. Um, yeah. Any questions that we can talk about what happened during the test right uh, pretty much what you saw on the test is what it will be like the entire year geometry is a tough tough class because it involves logic it's not like hey do these four steps or get to the answer it's always about logic even this right you got to be able to somehow tease out the information from a weird looking shape all right we're going to do something unpleasant today so today is an algebra review day. Um, we are going to review a concept. It's one of the hardest concepts in algebra one, and it's the second review that we do, go figure. But we're gonna review a concept in algebra one. I don't know about, uh, who else is new? Madison, you were new. So I don't know about the new kids, um, but I do know that if you had uh, uh, Miss Skittle last year, you did this before. Now, how successful were you? I don't know, we're gonna to see today. But today I need you to have a, just a sheet of paper of some, it doesn't have to be torn out, you can leave it in your notebook. We are gonna review, what, do you, what was one of the hardest things you did in Algebra 1 last year? So that's what we're doing, system of equations. Okay? So that's what I review, our review is gonna be on systems of equations. There are three ways to solve systems of equations. Uh, we'll start chapter three tomorrow. There's three ways to do systems of equation. Here's your homework. And it says two through 18 even. So there's basically nine problems you gotta do, nine problems. The book will specifically tell you what technique they want you to use. Last year you learned three techniques to solve a system of equations. Two through 18 even, page 69. What do I got in my hands? Sticks. Sticks. We're going to call these, we're going to call them lines or line segments. If you take two lines, right, and you put them on a flat surface, only two things can happen. You know, typically we said now to one, three, but let's just be real. Two things can happen. Either the lines are keras or they're not parallel. If the lines or segments are not parallel, guess what happens? If they're not parallel, She's doing that with her fingers, right? They intersect. How many places by chapter one do they intersect at? One spot. Today we're gonna to find that one spot. Oh, by the way, that's what you did last year. Last year you, le you learned three techniques. Do you remember the three techniques? Do you remember one of them? No. Sure you do. No. Calculator, what's the answer? That was technique number one. What's this kind of calculator? So what's technique number one? I graph the two lines and I find out where they intersect. Now you did it by hand, you graphed it, but you can also, hopefully Ms. Kittle showed you how to, you just type the two equations into your calculator, you say calculator, what's the answer? That's technique number one. You graph the two lines, find out where they intersect. I'm sure if I mention the other two, they will, you will at least remember doing this. The other two are, Madison, do you remember doing this last year? Do you remember the other two techniques? You remember? Okay, the other two techniques are called substitution and elimination, okay? Uh, in geometry, we use both of those, substitution and elimination. We don't do graphing. I never know. All right, all right, so I'm gonna do a quick review, and that's what the homework is on, is substitution elimination. Substitution elimination. Of the two, which is the one that you like to do? 
Elimination is stupid simple. And it works every time, it's very easy. It's better than graphing. In fact, you can do it quicker than you can type it into your graphing calculator. It just has to be in a specific form. And when it's not in that form, then you know, to use the technique called elimination is painful. But when it is in the form, it's really quick. I mean, it's simple. All right, so let's, let's set some realistic goals. So I can't teach you, by the way, this is a four day class. I'm gonna do it in one day, right? When you did this in algebra one, it was four days. Usually it's one day for graphing, and then two days for substitution, two days for elimination, that's five, I can't count. Um, so that's a whole week of doing this. We're gonna do it one class period. So realistically, if you did not master this last year, then probably you're still gonna struggle with it this year. Oh, by the way, guess what you get to do in algebra two? The same thing, again. So I will show you all the techniques that except for graphing. Graphing is literally, you just take a calculator and you type it in and it tells you the answer. You can also do it by hand, but we're not gonna do graphing, but we will do substitution elimination, okay? Substitution is not the hardest, but it is the messiest. Here we go. So the big picture, I kind of already gave it to you. Uh, that is, uh, well, linear equations, those are equations that make line. Remember, linear equations have a y and an x, okay? Uh, the x is always to the first power. Remember when x is to the second power, we call it a. If x is to the second power, we call it not linear, we call it, what shape does it make? Does it make a square? A what? Nope. When x is to the second power, it makes a smiley face. Right. right. You did this last year. Doesn't make the eyes, it just makes the smile. Uh, we in math, we call it a parabola. Right? Oh, yeah. So when it's to the second power, when x is to the second power, it doesn't make a line. It makes a either a smiley face or a frowny face, depending on whether it's positive or negative. Okay? Uh, you did this last year. You solved what are called quadratics. When you did the factoring, you set it equal to zero. You did this. Um, but when x is to the first power, right? Y is always to the first power. When x is to the first power, then uh, we call it a linear equation. Why? Because it makes a line, literally. And you did this pre-algebra, pre, uh, pre uh, you did it in algebra one. Okay. All right, so we'll be solving linear equations. There's one right there. By the way, that is this um, equation right here. It has a slope of and a y-intercept of. That means it goes through 0, 3, and it goes up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Okay? Uh, that was from last year. A system of equation just has two or more lines or smiley faces, right? Wouldn't be called a system of linear equations, but it would be a system of equations. But instead of having one, you get two of these. And when you graph those two, check it out, they intersect. More importantly, the idea is this. You see the red line? The red line is this one. That means any point on the red line makes this equation true. Any point, I'm gonna pick one at random, right here. What's that point? Absolutely not. It's one five. Remember, it goes x y. So one five makes this true. Let's see. Remember, it goes x y. Let's see. Uh, two times x is one. Two times one is plus three is. It makes it true. Pick another point. Uh, this point right here. What's that point? One two three. One two three. So it's negative three. Negative three. Any point on the red line right here makes this true. Watch x, y. Two times negative three, negative six plus three, negative three. Any point makes it true. Works the same thing with the blue line. I don't have a blue pen, but let's look at this point right here. That's two, negative three, two, negative three. So what's a half times two? What's half of two? What's half of two? One. one. And it's negative one. Negative one minus two is negative three. Right? If you've never realized that, that any physical point along the blue line makes this second equation true, any point along the red line makes this first equation true, that's why it's called a linear equation. It represents that line. 
What we are interested in is the one point that they have in common. That point that they have in common is what? Can you see it? What point do they have in common? Negative two, negative one. It turns out that negative two common negative one makes both of these true. And it's the only point that makes both of these true. Why? Because it's the point they have in common. When you solve a system of linear equations, this is what you're looking for. It's the one point that makes both of these equations true. Today, we're not going to be doing it with a graph. We're going to be doing it algebraically. Yeah. Where's the type that in my graph is bitter and I have this? Great. Wherever the two lines intersect is the answer. It's one line and two curves. Well, you, you're messing up. I don't know what I did. I know what you did. You put the x down next to two. All right. So there's the wind up. In other words, that's my uh, intro to what we're doing today. Okay. So um, there's a big but here, and the big but here is this: is that sometimes the lines where they intersect, right, is not at a nice friendly point. Like where is that point right there? I don't know. It looks like negative two point two negative 1.8 i don't know and that's why you have these other two techniques called uh substitution elimination so yeah when you can graph like the previous one and they intersect at a nice friendly point this is called a lattice point right where the the black lines come together when it, when they intersect at the last point that's why you spent at least a day if not two days doing it by hand they gave you ones like these two where you get this nice friendly point who does not remember doing this last year please you guys were in the same class as everyone else, by the way. Okay. So the issue is this, and why we need these other two techniques is when the intersection point does not occur at a nice, or, or two, these are called stadia or lattice points where the, the, the two black lines come together. Um, when it happens outside of one of those points, well, we can't solve it graphically. Uh, we can still use a graphing calculator. Graphing calculator will tell you exactly where it's at. Uh, we are going to be using the other two techniques, substitution elimination. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to walk you through one example, and then the rest of them we're all going to do on paper. Okay? And this is what's going to, uh, uh, this model that you're going to write on your paper is how you're going to do your homework. Okay. So I will show you substitution first, and then we'll do elimination. Everyone loves elimination. It's really easy. Okay? So why don't I always do elimination? Well, because... You have these two different techniques. It depends on what the two equations look like. I don't mean their graph. I mean, what do they literally look like? And I'll show you what they look like. Okay. So substitution, uh, these are going to be questions one through nine tonight for homework. So let's see, two, four, six, eight. How many are you going to have? Four that you're going to have to use using this technique. So pencils down. Make sure you're really paying attention. And by the way, this is a review. You did this last year. Okay, so when the two equations look like this, you see the two equations, what do you notice about this particular one? Does it look like the second one? One of these equations is already solved. And by solved, I mean one of the variables is off by itself, right? Do you see that the first one's already solved for y? When one of the two equations is already solved, it could be for y, it could be for x, it doesn't make a difference, we're going to always use substitution. Guess what you're going to have tonight for homework? The ones that say 1 through 9, one of the letters is already going to be solved for itself. On your paper, here's what I need you to do. You're going to write down the steps. So maybe put substitution. If you also want to write, I believe in the book it does say solve one through nine using substitution so i mean i think, I think it spells, spells it out for you okay so check it out one of the equations is already solved for itself so step number one i noticed this is small step number one says identify one equation that's already solved for one variable and it can be y or x it doesn't make a difference hey the first one it's already solved so that's step, and all you're doing is writing down steps right now. You're not going to do the, the second example I do is we'll do the math together. You remember doing this? Hey, the first one, check it out. You don't need to circle it like I did. Hey, that one's already solved for y. In geometry, we've been doing substitution. 
And it's literally the same thing. This says wherever I see the letter Y, what can I write? Yes. Everybody with that? Anytime I see the letter Y, because it's all for Y, I can write 3X. Well, look at the second equation. Does it say Y? So instead of this Y, I can write. So step number two is to rewrite the second equation. And I'm going to substitute in the first. Hopefully that made sense. These steps are not in your book, by the way. It's not hard. It's messy. Well, do you remember doing this last year? Partially. Well, that's why it's hard because no one remembers it, right? It's not a very memorable thing to remember. Okay, so I'm going to take this second equation, 5x plus y equals 24, and I'm going to rewrite it. But if I see a y, I'm going to write 3x. So I did that. I put it in parentheses because eventually this y might have another number attached to it, like 2 times y. And you would need to do 2 times 3x. You guys remembering doing this now? Kind of, sort of? Okay. All right. Uh, step three is I'm going to solve this equation now. I'm just going to solve it. I'm going to go through these steps real quick. I'm just solving it for x. Okay? So step number three is solve. 5x and 3x. Therefore, x is equal to x is equal to x is equal to three. So I solved it. Okay. So x is equal to three. Step four. I'm going to take this answer right here. It's called substitution. I'm going to substitute back in to one of these. Whatever floats your boats. Step number four is now take your answer. Substitute it back into either one. Bailey, which one do you want to substitute it into and why? Which one do you want to substitute into? The first one or the second one and why? WHY. You're going to take that and you're going to toss it into either this one or this one. Pick one and tell me why. WHY. Pick one. Why the first one, not the second one? Just think it through. Why the first one? And by the way, I think most of us choose the first one. Why the first one, not the second one? It's shorter. It's easier. It has fewer negatives. Maybe any of those would be good reasons. It will work with either one, and it doesn't matter. But if you're given a choice, choose the Bailey choice, which is let's do the shorter one, right? All right, so that's step four is I'm going to substitute this answer back into either one. Choose wisely, make your life easier. For me, it's whichever one is shorter, whichever one has the fewest number of negatives, whichever one has the smallest numbers. All those make sense. You guys remember doing this? So I'm going to choose the one Bailey said. First one. Chris, remember doing this? Okay. So anytime now I see an X, what am I going to write? So it says Y equals 3 times X. So I'm going to write Y is equal to 3 times 3. Now I'm going to solve this equation, step five. Therefore, y equals. We do have one more step, and it's to write the answer. What's this say? And what's that say? This is a point, x comma y. This is the answer, x comma y. So what's the answer? I'm going to claim that 3 comma 9, write the solution. 3 comma 9 is the answer to this system of equations. And it, it's the correct one. I have no memory of doing this last year. Anyone? Chandler, you don't get the answer. Chandler can't remember what he ate for breakfast this morning. Is that true? I didn't eat it. Well, then it's not true because you remember. Okay. Okay. So I said I was going to show you one. You write down the steps. Now we're going to do... I think three of them together, maybe two. Okay, so seriously, now you gotta take uh, control of your education. When I say, let's do this, let's really do this. Don't go through the motions, really do it, okay? You got the steps, I'll walk you through each one. You can ask questions, but we need to do this. Here we go. All right, write down these two equations. First one, second. And then we'll just run through the steps. X equals eight plus three Y, and two X minus five Y equals eight. For those of you that, um, are curious and you're like, well, he said I could use a graphing calculator, just type them in. Your graphing calculators only like equations that say y equals. Do either one of these say y equals? 
So you can't type these in. There are online graphing calculators. You literally just type in what's there. It tells you the answer. Right? Desmos, Desmos.com is the, the most popular one. It's very, very nice. Very well, slick. Why are you telling us these things? Well, because well, I live in the real world. I don't live in fantasy land where everyone loves math and everyone listens to the teacher. Right? The real world is, is someone texts someone, hey, I found this cool online site. I can get all the answers. That's what happens in the real world. Okay, here we go. Step number one, Chandler, read it. Step number one, what's it say? Identify one equation that already solved. For is one of these equations already solved for a letter? A variable. Which one? The second one, does it say x equals or y equals? Well, the first one says x equals. Now remember, it could be x, y, it doesn't make a difference. All right, tonight for homework, one of them are gonna, is already going to be solved. Okay. We good? Step one, all I'm doing is that you don't need to circle it or anything like that. Step number two, after you've identified it, says I'm going to take this into the second one and substitute. Whenever I see an x, what am I going to write? 8 plus 3y. You're going to need parentheses because now I've got two things. Okay? So anywhere I see an x, I'm going to put parentheses, x plus 3y. Do you see an x? So I'm going to write 2 times parentheses. And that's what I'm going to do. Okay. okay. See what it did? Uh, the the uh, only thing we're doing this by hand is this is a lot of math, and you can you can make a silly mistake, and I mean if you copy something down wrong or you do bad math, and it throws everything way off, and it goes really bad. There's only one test that I hate to grade in Algebra One, and it's this one, because the kid that instead of writes eight plus three y for some reason, just a simple mistake, writes three plus eight y. It throws it off to such an ugly number that, oh, it's horrible to grade. I hate grading this. I like teaching. It's fun. But I don't like grading this test. Okay. Uh, Madison, distributed property real quick. You can look at your paper, too. Just give me the distributed property. The answer. Okay. So she said 16 plus 6y minus 5y equals 8. Is that not the distributed property? It's like, what do you want me to do? Matt, simplify. Um, the no, simplify first. Oh, 16 plus 1y. 16 plus 1y, or just plain old 16 plus y equals 8. Stop me if you're lost. We're just doing algebra now. Last next step. Where do you see a two? Well, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, Just solve the equation. Well, where's the variable? Left or right side? So, okay. so we got y equals negative eight. Don't scare me like that was. Sorry, I, 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 All right. Uh, we're halfway there. It's called the substitution method. So we can do one more substitution. This is step four. We're going to take this sucker, and we're going to do the Bailey method. All right, Karis, which one do you want to mess with? First one or the second one? Which one looks easier? Which one? Why the first one, not the second one? Big numbers, negative, right? The other one doesn't have as big a number, and everything's positive. So we'll call that the Bailey method. The Bailey method is pick the one that makes your life easier. All right. So I am also going to choose. Now, it will work with the second one. If you don't believe me, you choose the second one. We'll choose the first one. We'll get the same answer. So this says, anywhere I see a Y, what am I going to write? Hey, I see a Y, I'm going to write parentheses negative 8. Okay? Make sure you're doing this. And now we simply last, or second last step, we solve this one. 3 times negative 8. Okay, and 8 plus negative 24 is negative 16. And then we simply write our answer. Now, a lot of kids will get all the way down here, and then they'll mess up, right? Do you remember, the point goes x comma y, not y comma x. So make sure you look at what it says. It says negative 16 comma negative 8. So my claim is that that is the point that those two lines intersect at, negative 16, negative 8. All right. 
you follow along. We got the steps. You remember doing this last year? It's just steps. This is why algebra is easy to teach and geometry is hard to teach. This is monkey stuff right here. Just follow the steps. Geometry is, well, what's the next step? I mean, I'm not gonna tell you. You gotta figure that out yourself. That's why geometry is way harder than algebra. Right? And most kids run screaming from my class in joy at the end of the year. Because they know they're going back to algebra two, and algebra two is like this is algebra two as well. But uh, geometry is you got to do a lot of thinking in geometry. The cool thing is in geometry, we rarely do this. We do two plus eight. All right, one more. All right, here we go. One more. Amaya, which one are we picking? First or second? Second one. Hey, that one's already solved. Of course, the, the question would be, well, what happens if neither equation is solved? That's what we do. We next technique, elimination. Okay. So this one, it says x equals 7y. So anywhere I see an x, I can write seven parentheses 7y. So I go back to the first one, and then wherever I see an x, I'm going to write parentheses 7y. You can work ahead if you want. Four times seven Y, 28 Y. Stop me if I get too, go too faster. So 28 Y minus five Y equals 92. Matt, redeem yourself, simplify. Equals 92, okay? And it turns out that uh, 92 is divisible by 23. Take a guess. What times three is two? What times three is two? Four. You're like, what? Three times four is not two, it's 12. Oh, now I see what he meant. All right, so it, I, mean, I gave you a nice friend one. So y equals four, we okay? All right, Bailey method, which one are we picking? Second one, I agree. Pick the second one. I, it will work with the top one. Uh, four times negative five is negative 20. Add negative 20, that's uh, 112. Four goes to 112. That's a lot of math. Let's use the Bailey method, pick the easier one, right? Y is equal to four, so that's just seven times four, therefore the answer is, and the final answer would therefore be 28 comma four. Don't make it to the very end and write your numbers backwards. It goes X comma Y is 20. <laughs> What? Well, you don't know that. Or they could be like it. They could be like this. That all we know is that they intersect at twenty. Now, if you further, you want to. The problem is that neither one of these is solved for y, so I can't see what the slope is visually right now. If it said y equals something, 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 I could say, oh, look at the slope. But I would actually have to solve this to figure out what the or solve for y to figure out what the slope is. I mean, I can tell what the slope is on this one. It's what one seven. I saw divide both sides by seven. We're, we're getting way in the weeds there. The only thing we're doing today is just finding the, uh, uh, the solution to the system of equations. Okay, good? So uh, the big question is, well, what happens when one of the equations is not solved for either X or Y? That's why we have this other technique called elimination. Elimination is when neither of the equations is solved. Okay, you're gonna like this. Uh, by the way, this is 10 through 18. So 10, 12, 14, did I give you two through 18? Is that what I gave you? So two, I said 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So you got five of these tonight for homework. Uh, most kids actually, I mean, literally get some joy out of doing this one. Go figure. Yeah. Uh, solve for, yeah. Question eight is the only one that isn't solved for one of the variables. Um, you can solve for X pretty easy. Just add the other one to the other side and then it says X equals. That makes sense? It says X minus something one. Number eight, just add seven y to both sides and you get x equals seven y plus 13. Okay, so you see the issue here, right? Neither one of these is solved. Well, this is called the elimination technique. Um, so in algebra, you're allowed to add equation to another equation. Check it out. Give me a true equation, somebody, nice friendly numbers. Just give me an equation. No, no, one that we already know all the numbers. Yeah. 
Five plus four equals nine. Is that true? Give me another true equation. Five plus three equals three. Is that true? Yeah. Turns out, are we allowed to add or subtract these two? We certainly can. Let's add them. Five plus five. Three plus four. Nine plus eight. Hey, we got another true one. Can you subtract? Heck yeah, but remember when you subtract something, you remember doing this? What does it do to all the signs on the inside? Swaps them. It doesn't make them negative, it just swaps signs. So this is negative five, this is negative three, and this is negative eight. All right, now let's add. Five minus five, four minus three, nine minus eight. You can add or subtract. You can add or subtract. So this method is called elimination because when we add or subtract, you're going to find out that one of the variables poof, goes away. It eliminates itself. Check it out. See the two equations? Step number one, write this down. So this is called elimination. Step number one, identify which of the variables match. Either the X or the Y are going to match. What do you mean match? I mean the number in front of them will be the same. Is five the same as three? Is one the same as one? Wait a minute, that's a negative one, that's five. Yeah, ignore the signs. We're just looking at numbers. Five is not the same as three, but one is the same as one. Hey, the Y's match. The Y's match. That's step number one. If the signs are opposite, you're going to add. If the signs are the same, you're going to subtract. Step number two says add or subtract. We'll cover add first, and then we'll talk about what happens when we need to subtract. When the signs are opposite, you're going to add. When the signs are the same, I mean negative and a negative, or a positive and a positive, then you're going to subtract. You, you don't remember doing this? Okay. So I simply draw a line. Hey, the signs are opposite. We're going to add 5x and 3x. y minus y is 0. Poof, it went away. And 12 plus 20 is 32. Check it out. There's no more Ys. I eliminated the Ys simply by adding. That's what's called elimination. Step number three, solve. Write the steps down. You're not going to remember this tonight. Step number three says solve. So therefore, Matt yelled out X equals four. Guess what step five is going to be? I'm sorry, step four. I messed that up. Step three was solved. You're going to do the Bailey thing again. You're going to take this, and you're going to substitute it. Oh, then it should be called the substitution. Ah, okay, maybe. It's called the elimination substitution method. There we go. No, all math books call it elimination. I'm going to take this answer. All right, this one isn't friendly. I'm going to stick it into either one. Bailey, your choice. Pick one. Why the second one, not the first one? Why is it easier? Number one mistake kids make now is one drop in negatives. So if you ever get the choice, choose the one that has the fewest number of negatives. If they're all positive, choose the one that has the smaller numbers, right? So I'm going to choose what she said, which was second one. So step number four, you substitute into either equation. We chose the second one. So anytime I see an X, I'm going to write four. Hey, I see an X. It says three times X. I'm put parentheses, right? Four. Step five, therefore, would be what? Take a guess. Solve that equation. So step five is solve that equation. Let's see, that's 12. Subtract 12 from both sides, and we get y equals zero. Step six is write the answer. Remember, it goes x comma y. So the answer is most kids like elimination because it at least the first step is really simple. The second step is just as complicated as substitution, but usually you forget that there's a second step and you're like, oh, that's the one where something goes away. All right, you ready to do one? All right, so write these two equations down. When the signs are opposite, we add. When the signs are the same, we have to subtract. No. All right, do the X's match up? Are the numbers the same? It says nine and six, not the same. Do the Y's match up? Yeah, two and two, you're, well, no, it's negative, whatever. We're not looking at the signs in step one, we're just seeing what matches, the X's or the Y's. The, the Y's match up. 
So the issue here is they're both the same signs. When the signs are the same, they mean positive or negative, then you have to subtract. When they're opposite, plus or minus, you add and one of them goes away. So here's the technique. You can, in algebra, do anything you want to one side as long as you do it to the other side. So I'm going to take the second equation, and there's nothing special about the second, um, and I'm going to multiply everything by negative one, right? I'm going to subtract, right? Most people will not write this step. They will just do it. They will write what's the result of it. The math behind it is this. You can multiply anything you want to both sides of the equation, and you're still left with equality. I'm going to choose to multiply everything by negative one. All I'm doing is multiplying everything by negative one. Now I'm gonna erase that negative one because most kids don't write that. They just simply, what's the opposite of six X? What's the opposite of negative two Y? What's the opposite of 32? What are you really doing? You're multiplying everything by a negative one. They rewrite the two equations. What do kids mostly do? They don't do that. They kind of like take their pencil and they scratch through things and make one negative, one positive. Yeah, that's what I do as well too. When I'm doing a PowerPoint, I can make it nice and pretty. Do you remember doing this last year? Okay. When the signs are now opposite, now when we add, poof, one of them goes away. So technically we're subtracting, but really subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. That's what we're doing. We're adding the opposite. So what, what do kids literally mostly do? They'll rewrite the first one. When they write the second one, they just write opposite signs and then add. Nobody writes times negative one, even though math teachers would love for you to do that. Okay, let's add six minus nine minus six. These go away, and this gives me what added to 32 is 50. Twenty-eight. Eighteen or twenty-eight? Eighteen. It's eighteen. More negatives, more positives. Well, positive, so it's 18. Positive 18. Therefore, x equals. I agree. Okay. The next step says we go back to the two equations and we. Oh, look at that ugly mess. I need help there. Which one looks easier? They both look ugly. Both of them have negative. This one has two negatives, but this one has a 50. There's really no good choice here. They're both ugly. But pick one. I'm going to choose the first one because it only has one negative. But it does have a 50. All right. We're, anywhere we see an X, we're going to write 6. I see an X. So I'll put parentheses. 6. 9 times 6. 54. I'm solving. Subtract 54 from both sides. You get... Four or negative four? Negative four. Therefore, y equals positive two. Final answer, six comma two. That was substitution and elimination. There's only one last but, and that but is what happens if none of the numbers match? What if it looks like this and neither of the numbers match, right? So this was the one where I think a lot of kids, oh, this is fun. I don't know why, but maybe it was just me and I'm just, I'm just projecting on you. All right. Notice the X's don't match and the Y's don't match. You see that? And I certainly don't want to use substitution. Then I got to solve for either X or Y. I can still use elimination. This is the trick. This is called scalar multiplication. Are you allowed to add anything to both sides of an equation? Are you allowed to multiply anything to both sides of the equation? That's what we're going to do. We're going to force either the x's to match or the y's to match. All right? And it is your choice. You can match either the x's or the y's. Is there a number that we can multiply either one of these equations by that would match the x's or the y's? Can you turn a 3 into a 5 or a 5 into a 3? Easily. Can you turn a 2 into a 4 or a 4 into a 2? Easily. How? Multiply what? Which equation? Multiply the top by everything by two, and then the y's will match. That's this is called scalar multiplication. So this particular one, scalar multiplication, we're going to multiply the top one. We're going to match the y's. Therefore, I'm going to multiply the top one by two. 
because one's already negative, one's positive, so it's going to be good. We're going to be able to add. All right. What do you get when you multiply the top one by two? You could do this in your head. Come on. 30 equals how much? Plus, and then write the second one underneath. Now the y's match. And one's positive, one's negative. If you remember what Ms. Kittle said, she probably said something to the effect of, if both of them were positive to start with, don't multiply by two, multiply by negative two. And then you'll get one plus one minus. That way, we, that way we don't have to subtract and change all the signs. Okay, uh, let's add. What do we get? What do you get when you add? 39 equals 13x, therefore x equals x equals 3. This is also why kids like women. I mean, it's pretty quick and simple, right? That substitution thing, it just seems like the algebra steps are a little bit more challenging. Uh, which one? First or second? First? Second. There's nothing wrong with the first, by the way. We could. I'm probably sure, even though this one has a negative look, the numbers are really small. I'd probably choose the second. But you could certainly choose the first one. You get 38 plus 30. Plus 4y, subtract 30, you get uh, 8, uh, y is equal to 2, okay? On the second one, if I actually do it, okay, the numbers are a little bit easier. 3 times 3 is 9. I might even argue that the second one's harder because there's more negatives involved. Subtract 9 from both sides and you get, therefore, y equals 2. So almost, you could make the argument, putting the first one, you deal with fewer negatives. Uh, so therefore, x, y, 3, 2. All right, there is your supposedly algebra review because you guys were all experts at this, right? Who got an A on this test last year? Did you really, Chris? Good, good for you, all right? This is, this was, but I will say this, you know, it's not like you just wake up one day and you're doing this. You, you know, this was built upon doing algebra every single day. So a lot of times your algebra skills become a little bit weak in, in geometry. Because most of the time we do algebra like we did on the test. I'm not going to say what the question was. It's like a two-step equation at most did you solve instead of multiple step equations here. Yeah. All right, question number eight. Let's, I'm going to write this because it's a good one. Um, give me the two equations. This is question number eight. Give me the two. X minus 7Y equals X minus 7 y equals 13. 13, and the second one? 3x minus 5y equals 23. Equals 23. And they say they want you to solve it by substitution. So, so here's, here's what I would do. Notice that the first equation, it just says x. This would be pretty easy to get x by itself. Just add 7y to both sides. So you'd get x is equal to 7y plus 13. All I did was add 7y to both sides. And now... This is substitution. This is an elimination. Now that's what I'm going to substitute into the second one anywhere I see an x. That make sense? Eight's the only difficult one. For me, whenever I get a question like number eight, I just immediately jump to, uh, I mean, I got, a, I got an x and a y. I got an x and a y. Why don't I use uh, elimination? I like elimination. I, I mean, sometimes I will even force my, you know, if it's a substitution one, I'll just write it so I can use elimination. What am I lying? I just used my graphing calculator. No, I, I actually do find it. it. It's kind of fun. Uh, I will show you, since you're curious, I will show you the website. Let's see if I can share this. Stop share. And let's go to, it's called uh, desmos.com. D-E-S-M-O-S.com. So desmos.com, let me share this with my e-learners. Or are we uh, right here? All right. So uh, give me those two equations again from the very start. Somebody read them off the board. X. No, no, from the very start. X minus 7Y equals 13. There's your first one. And the second one equals 23. Where do they intersect? Right here. What's that point? Six, negative one, there's your answer.
All right, if you use Desmos, use it to check your work, not do your work. But Desmos is pretty darn cool. All right, e-learners, hopefully that made sense. If not, send me an email, and I'd be happy to assist you. I will catch you tomorrow.